Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name's Maddie and I like to make travel vlogs. Um, so before we get started, if you're looking for some travel inspiration, then please don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots more travel videos coming soon. This video today is going to be a travel guide on Panama where I spent two weeks during a backpacking trip through uh, a bit of South and Central America at the beginning of this year. But yeah, before I start, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's already watched um, some of my vlogs from Colombia. I've got a whole series on my time in Colombia, which you can find on my channel. And then yeah, the last video I uploaded was um, of my journey from Colombia to Panama, which was a five day sailing trip via the San Blas Islands. Uh, so yeah, definitely go and check that out if you haven't already. But anyways, the, the reason that this video is gonna be a bit different to the previous vlogs that I've done of this backpacking trip um, is because uh, I did actually film everything when I was out there and I had a load of good footage from Panama. Um, but unfortunately, when I got to Costa Rica, my camera got stolen and um, yeah, I hadn't backed up my camera in two weeks. So that was a lesson learned on my part. Yeah, I'm absolutely gutted that I lost all my footage, but I thought I would do this kind of Panama travel guide video, which is kind of a bit more of a sit down talking video to uh, let you know what I got up to and to hopefully to provide some useful information for anyone who's thinking of traveling to Panama. Um, if you do like this style of video, then please drop me a comment and I will, um, make some more videos like this. I think I probably will anyway, because since I've started vlogging more, I actually really enjoy picking up my camera and speaking into it. I don't know why, probably because I, I talk to myself all the time and this is basically the same thing, just like talking into a camera. Um, so yeah, maybe that's why I enjoy it. Okay, so let's start talking about Panama. So I spent about two weeks total in Panama, but obviously the first five days of that were on the San Blas Islands. If you are gonna travel from Colombia to Panama or Panama to Colombia, like this is the way to do it. It was absolutely incredible. So the San Blas Islands are a group of islands towards the south of Panama in the Caribbean Sea, and they are absolute paradise, like untouched paradise. They're almost their own little country really, as they're still, um, they're still like a group of indigenous people called the Kunas that live there. And um, I think they almost like own the islands. I think they, they basically have control of the islands. Um, even though they're part of Panama, it's very much like the Kunas land. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's really great to just like immerse yourself in that culture and be really disconnected uh, from the kind of real world that we live in or the world that we live in now. And yeah, it's just complete paradise. Like you cannot miss this if you go to Panama. It is the like I think the number one place that you have to visit if you go um so yeah obviously I did a five day sailing trip from Colombia to Panama via the San Blas Islands uh so that was um we spent three days kind of traveling around the islands visiting different islands yeah obviously there's like over 360 islands so we didn't visit them all but we visited maybe like six or seven islands uh and saw loads on the way when we were passing through um they're really tiny islands like some of them are literally just like three palm trees and a little bit of sand if even if they have that you know um and then like even the biggest island is still you can probably walk from one side to the other and like half an hour maybe less than that um they're like really small islands just like complete paradise in the in the middle of the ocean if you want to know more about the sailboat trip um definitely check out my my last vlog that i did i'll link it in the description below uh there there are also alternative options for visiting the san blas islands um so if you think this sail trip isn't really your thing there are other options to visit them as well the main other competitor to blue sailing is san blas adventures which is like a speedboat to get from you take a speedboat either from Panama to get to Colombia or from Colombia to get to Panama and you go via the San Blas Islands but you actually like sleep on the island yeah that sounds kind of cool as well also if you're just visiting Panama then you can do day trips from Panama City and you can also do like multi-day trips on boats and things um just that you know leave from Panama and return to Panama um 
yeah, so there's lots of options. Okay, so let's move on to Panama City. So after the five day sailing boat trip and visiting the San Blas Islands, I then arrived in Panama City. Um, I must admit this wasn't my favorite city, but I had a few friends there and obviously all the people who were on my sailboat trip, they were also going to Panama City. So I had planned to stay a few days. We were also there when a carnival was on in Panama City. Um, I'm sure it has nothing on like Barranquilla Carnival or Rio Carnival, but um, it, it was still fun and like cool to just kind of experience the atmosphere and uh, see the parade and stuff. So things to do in Panama City, definitely take a walk around the old town. It's kind of got like Cartagena vibes in terms of like the colonial architecture. There's still like pretty buildings and nice rooftop bars and nice view of the of the ocean and um, the kind of like modern city as well. But yeah, it kind of, I think it lacks a bit of atmosphere compared to Cartagena, especially when I was there anyway. Um, but yeah, it's very pretty. There's some nice rooftop bars um, and things like that. So definitely check that out. I stayed at the Selena Hostel in Panama City, which had a rooftop bar. That was really lovely. We saw a beautiful sunset and um, there was like a live DJ set. So yeah, it was good atmosphere. They also do food up there as well. So um, yeah, I would recommend going there. Shopping is another thing to do in Panama City. There's loads of shopping malls there um, and it really feels like a Western city. Or if you're on like a long, backpacking trip then it's probably a good place to like maybe I don't know pick up some new clothes or like replace your broken things I don't know so yeah another thing to do is to of course visit the Panama Canal so we went to the Miraflores lock to cut there's a viewing platform there um it is expensive for like what it is um so I can't remember how much we paid but I think it was around like maybe 35 dollars um, and it includes, you, you watch a movie for like 45 minutes about the history of the canal and the engineering behind it um, and what it's used for and stuff like this. And then uh, you also have access to the viewing platform, which you basically just watch the boats kind of go through the lock um, and pass through the canal. Uh, so yeah, if you're into like engineering and things like that, then um, it is very cool. And I guess it's, it's it's interesting to see, but I do think it is quite expensive for what it is. Um, probably like a boat trip along the canal would be better, but obviously um, I, I personally didn't really have the budget to do that. Um, but if you do, then I think that that could be a good option. Um, Cause I guess you maybe see a bit more. It is cool to see like how the levels in the water change and watch the boats go through and stuff at the, at the lock. Also, Panama City is a good place to do like day trips from. So as I said before, you can do a day trip to obviously the San Blas Islands and, or you can use it as kind of your base to start there, visit the islands and come back. Um, or you can also do a day visit to, they've got quite a few national parks around the city. Um, so we went to one called, uh, I think it was called Metropolitan City Park. And it was, it wasn't too far out, but we still saw quite a lot of like, wildlife and nature and um yeah it was just like a really nice day trip to sort of escape the city and be more in like nature um but I think there's also a few more that are like more deep into the jungle when you I don't know you might even be able to see like more animals and things like monkeys and sloths um which we actually you could see that at the Metropolitan Park as well we were just unlucky and didn't see any <laughs> but we also didn't like have a guide or anything so maybe that was also why so overall Panama City was was really fun I had a good time with my friends there but um I yeah I definitely think it's not a city that I will go back to if I don't need to um and yeah it's it's also quite expensive for like what it is I think compared to other Latin American cities which are quite similar um, you can definitely find ones that are cheaper, but um, yeah, it's, I guess it's always good to experience things for yourself and make your own opinions. So that was just my opinion. Um, definitely go and check it out for yourself and form your own opinions of the place. So Bocas del Toro. So after Panama City, I headed straight to Bocas del Toro. I got a night bus from Panama City to Bocas, which wasn't the most comfortable as the driver decided that he wanted to turn the aircon on like really high. So I had leggings on and a jumper on and obviously like socks and shoes um, and like a little windbreaker jacket and I was still freezing. Like I was like curling up in a ball to try and keep warm. Um, so yeah, it wasn't the most comfortable night bus I've been on, but 
you know, it got me from A to B and I um, saved a night's accommodation because I was on the bus instead. But yeah, Bocas del Toro. This is another group of islands, but in the north of Panama. I'm not sure how many islands there are in Bocas del Toro, but um, there's like a few main ones and they're all like relatively big in size um, or at least bigger than the San Blas Islands. So Isla Basimentos is the um, the main island. That's the island where like the, the main town is, that's where the cash points are, that's where bars are, restaurants are, all these kind of things. So I would definitely recommend staying there um, for a few days uh, just because like you kind of get the atmosphere of the town um, so you can kind of experience a bit more I guess instead of just, I guess it depends what you want but like if you're looking for like more of just kind of being isolated on an island with nothing there, then choose one of the other islands. But if you kind of want somewhere where you can easily access everything and you also want kind of a bit of a lively atmosphere, then yeah, definitely stay on the main island. Or you can do tours and water, get water taxis to all the other islands and they're not far away from each other. So I think the maximum journey we did was maybe like an hour on a speedboat um, to the furthest island away. Um, which was Isla Zapatillos. Yeah, it's, it's not that far to travel between the islands and that it's all doable from the main island. Yeah, if you do have a bit more time as well, I'd recommend maybe spending, like I did, I spent a few days on the main island and then I spent um, a few days on another island. Day trips from the main island that we did include, um, the popular ones would include um, a trip to Red Frog Island, um, which is basically, there's, there's a beach there and, there's basically like loads of red frogs on the island. We actually really struggled finding a red frog, but um, everyone kept telling us that they'd seen loads. So maybe we just weren't looking well enough. I don't know. But um, at the end of our time on the island, we literally spent an hour going around just looking for these frogs and we did find one. So <laughs> sorry, my camera just turned off for a second, but um, yeah, it was worth it in the end. We finally saw a frog and uh, mission complete. We also saw a sloth, which was cool as well. So um, yeah, two for the price of one. Um, yeah, and then another day trip you can do is a day trip to Zapatilla Island. Um, I think this is the island that is the furthest away. Yeah, we ended up doing a tour which was um, 30 US dollars, but it's kind of a, um, it's, it's more like, it's like a day trip basically, and you visit a few different places before then visiting Isla Zapatillas. Um, and kind of spending a few hours there just like relaxing on the island and exploring doing whatever you want so we stopped to like see some dolphins and we went snorkeling um, and I'm really gutted I don't have the footage but um, someone who I met did send me some of their footage so I will insert that here now um, so yeah we went snorkeling which was really cool um, we didn't see anything like crazy when we were snorkeling but um, we saw some beautiful coral reefs uh, some quite big fish Not nothing crazy but like it was really cool really beautiful um and then we also saw the dolphins and we saw starfish as well so we went to like specific locations which had lots of starfish but that brings me on to my next point which is um another day trip you can do which is actually on the main island is um you can visit playa estrella so um yeah we just took the bus from the main town and it's just at the other side of the island. So I think the bus was maybe like 40 minutes or something like that. Um, and it was pretty cheap. Um, and yeah, it just takes you to the other side of the island and that's near Playa Estrella. It's a small um, walk there, but, um, and also Playa Estrella is Starfish Beach, sorry. <laughs> um, it's basically a beach which um, has like, there's just loads of starfish there. There's tons. It's like a really, really lovely, uh, beautiful crystal clear, sea and st starfish everywhere um so yeah definitely do that it's a really cheap day trip and you get to see loads of starfish whilst you're in Bocas, i would really recommend staying at the bambuda hostels there so they have three there um all on different islands i stayed on the the one on the main island and um for a few days and then i went to uh, their other one called bambuda lodge which is on isla solarte um and I was taught, like, originally I was scared because the people at the, the people at the Bambido hostel on the main island were like, oh, it's pretty, like, coupley and chilled. And I was like, oh my God, like, this isn't going to be good. And then I got there and it was honestly so good. Like, the vibes were amazing. Um, everyone was super friendly. Like, you know, everyone was chatting, drinking, playing games, um, having fun. Um, and they also do this, like, uh, every day they do this, like, trek through the 
through the jungle there and then you end up on this beach um, and you can do some snorkeling there and then a speedboat comes and picks you up and um, takes you back to the hostel. But another cool thing about this hostel is they have a slide which goes um, from the lodge into the sea. Uh, so yeah, that was really fun. Um, it was just honestly like such good vibes there. Definitely go there. It was super fun and social there. I would I would definitely recommend it. I've also heard good things about Aqua Lounge and uh, the Selena hostels there too, because there's one on Red Beach and there's one on the main island. See, I didn't really visit that many places in Panama just because I was tight on time and um, the bus situation in Panama isn't great, which I'll get into a bit later. Um, but obviously before going and when I was out there and when I was speaking to people, I researched into a few other places that um, also sounded really interesting to me. So I'll mention them here. Uh, the first place is Santa Catalina. Um, and I know I really, really wanted to go here, but I just, I didn't have the time and the, the buses, it was, it was too difficult for me to get there in the time that I had. Um, but yeah, so Santa Catalina is on the Pacific side of Pacific coast of Panama. And from Santa Catalina, you can visit the island called Coiba. And apparently this is like the most amazing snorkeling ever. I actually kind of regret not going now. I wish I spent two days on the bus just to experience this snorkeling. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out if you've got the time. It looks incredible. Um, I don't know, you probably only need like a few days there. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. There's also quite a few other little surf towns on the Pacific coast. So I think one I've heard of is Playa Venao. But yeah, I think there's quite a few like chilled surf towns um, if you're into that. Also Boquete is another place to check out. Uh, it's kind of in between Panama City and Bocas. Uh, in the center of Panama, like not near the coast. It's, I think it's a bit more kind of like, um, you know, there's like mountains around and um, you can do like extreme sports there, like zip lining and things like that and hike to various places. So I've heard it similar to La Fortuna or Monte Verde in Costa Rica, which I was planning on visiting. Um, so I kind of just skipped Boquete. However, um, it did look really beautiful. I had some friends who went there and they said they had a really good time. And um, I'm not sure whether maybe you could get things like zip lining for a bit cheaper than you would in Costa Rica. Um, but yeah, also seems like a really cool place to check out. Okay, so getting around Panama. Um, in Panama City, you can use Uber. I think that is probably your best option. It's usually cheaper than the yellow taxis and I always feel safer in an Uber because obviously you have the driver's details um, on the app. Uh, so you know like what car you're getting in, you know who your driver is and it's all kind of gone through the Uber app. Um, so yeah, definitely definitely use Uber if you're in Panama City. For traveling between cities, uh, the prim primary mode of transport is buses. Um, but yeah, the bus situation in Panama is a bit frustrating because you can't book your buses online. Or I found it really hard to even find timetables of the buses online. So you actually have to go to the bus station to purchase your tickets, um, which becomes a bit frustrating when you're on a schedule or you know, you're tight for time or you have a backpack with you and um, you don't know if you're actually even gonna get a seat on this bus. I think a lot of the time they are like smaller buses and you will usually get a seat. However, um, I have had experience where they, the buses going from a specific location to another aren't that frequent. And so there might only be like two a day. And I did actually get, um, didn't get a space on one bus when I was, um, this this wasn't actually in, in Panama, but it was the same situation in Costa Rica. I didn't actually get a place on the bus. So then I had to get another two buses to get to um, the place where I needed to then get another bus from. So it just makes things a bit more difficult and not really ideal. Um, but yeah, there is buses available from like different cities um, and it's obviously the cheapest way to travel between the cities. So um, yeah, just, just be aware that you can't, purchase the tickets online. I really hope they change that because it's really stupid, but yeah, that's the situation there. And shuttle buses are also another option. There's a few companies that run shuttle buses between different cities or hostels that run shuttle buses um, between their different hostels and things like that. Um, so that's also another option. Obviously it is a bit more expensive. So I think generally you're looking at 30 US dollars for like the cheapest shuttles. 
for yeah one ride between city uh, and finally flying is also another option i know people often fly from uh, panama city to bocas del toro or like near there obviously that's just a bit more expensive but um probably if, if you're just visiting those two places it might be the best option for you so finally let's move on to costs and budgeting so yeah it's a bit difficult for me to say exactly how much to budget for um panama because um, obviously like five days of my trip was spent on the sailboat um, which was which I think it probably is a bit more expensive as to what you'd pay if you just went from Panama but I'm not sure I haven't looked into those options and I also think there's like various options available you know like if you want like luxury then obviously you're going to pay more yeah when I arrived in Panama I then uh, budgeted like I really wanted to spend 50 pounds a day like have 50 pounds a day as my budget um but yeah oh, oh my light has broken but it's okay I'll just continue it like this because we're at the end of the video Okay, we've got a makeshift little light. So I budgeted 50 pounds a day, but I actually ended up spending about 60 pounds a day. Um, yeah, Panama is quite expensive and I definitely had a shock from coming from Colombia to Panama. Uh, things like accommodation are gonna cost you, like if you want like at least a decent hostel, it's gonna be at least like 20 pounds a night. Um, and that was kind of a minimum really. Um, yeah, and then like transport, food, things like that are just a lot more expensive than they are in Colombia. Um, so yeah, I ended up spending about £60 a, a day, which was I think in total 500 for the extra week and a half I was there. But I really wasn't prepared for how expensive Panama was going to be compared to other Latin American countries. So that is just a warning. I um, also thought I'd mention that I use the Travel Spend app to track my budgeting. I would really recommend this app. Before this big back packing trip I never really budgeted my holidays um so yeah this app has really helped me to um keep on track of my spending you can like set yourself a daily budget so say for like two weeks you plan on spending 60 pounds every day it will like calculate the total and then um when you put in like all your spendings it will then kind of um it will calculate for you how much over you are or how much under you are and how much left you have to spend again it's called travel spend and I think it's it's available in the app store and I think it's also probably available on Android as well. Um, I've just got the free version. There is a version that you can pay for, but um, yeah, the free version is fine for me for now. So yeah, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope that this has provided some useful information. Um, I hope it's given you lots of advice and tips for if you're planning to travel to Panama um, and if not I hope it's inspired you to maybe take a visit there. It is a really beautiful country, it's definitely worth a visit, uh, especially the islands and yeah so if you did like please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below, I will really appreciate it so um, yeah also my next vlog will be on my time in Costa Rica, subscribe to get a notification of when that will be out. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!